What's up everyone? You are watching Eddie's World. This video is a compilation of our first 8 custom Akato Warriors and our very first custom tournament. This is going to be a long video so grab the popcorn and enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Eddie's World. This is our Akito collection. Now the other day we were opening up packs off camera and Eddie opened up this guy and he said, Daddy, we got Storm Strike. And I was looking at him like, this isn't Storm Strike, but I mean, he is Storm Strike. So that gave me an idea. Since we can't get Storm Strike, I am gonna turn this guy into Storm Strike. All right, guys, make sure you watch this video to the very end because even I was blown away with the results. So, First, what I'm doing here is I need to make Storm Strike's dual weapons. So I noticed that Chuck Lee's weapon looked perfect to alter into Storm Strike's weapon. So, I mean, I just, there's no other way to do it. I had to cut his hands off. And then once I had his nunchucks out, I had to cut Storm Strike's dice, as I call them, out of some PVC I had left over. And here I'm just drilling two holes straight through. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut Chuck Lee's nunchucks and I'm just going to stick that end into these two cubes and glue them in. And as you can see, those are exact replicas of Storm Strike's weapons right there. So I'm just going to pour a little Gorilla Glue in there and put it out in the sun to dry. Now these things actually expand when they dry, so a little foam came out. I'm just gonna cut that off, and then I'm gonna spray paint these things as best I can. Now I know these are moving parts, so chances are the paint is not gonna do well on these. You can see it's still a little bumpy. I just sanded them really quickly, and then I put a couple of layers of paint on them. Now onto Storm Strike himself, I just, once I figured out how they got these weapons in, I knew it was just in there with pressure, so I just pulled it out. And firstly, I started painting the white. At this point, I wasn't sure how this thing was gonna come out because there's a lot of small things you gotta paint, so I honestly had no idea how this was gonna turn out. I was really anxious to just get some paint on this guy and, and see if I could get any kind of uh, clue as to if, it's, if this was going to actually work or not. But once I started getting most of the white down, I could see that it was actually looking all right. Luckily, a lot of the different colors have bumps and are clearly defined, so it was pretty easy to paint. So as you can see there, the white is on, the first coat at least, and it's looking pretty good. So next I have this blue. There's actually two blues I'm painting on this guy. This was the darker of the two. So I just decided to paint all of him. And I mean, this, this was some really fine detail work. Having him on that little controller was really helpful because I could spin him like that. So as you see, that's just one coat and it already looks pretty good right there. So now here I'm painting the lighter of the blues and it's a little hard to see on camera here. Now right here you can see it a little better. In person it looks really good. I think you can see it too at the end how good it looks but this is the lighter of the two blues. Now if you look at Storm Strike on the checklist, he looks completely different than the pictures I've seen of people who have actually gotten him. So I was going off of the pictures of people who have actually gotten Storm Strike. I was not going off the checklist because that one shows his darker blue color very dark. So as you can see, both his blues are pretty light. His shoulder pad and his base plate are gonna be pretty dark. So that right there, guys, that looks really good to me. 
I was really happy at this point how it was turning out but I realized I didn't have one of the colors that I needed so we're going back to the thrift store and don't worry because you guys can just wait in the car and I'm back I got it it's that metallic blue for his shoulders and for his base plate and here is the metallic blue and this just sealed the deal once this went on even with only one coat it was just amazing to see yeah you guys can see there it, it looks pretty good and once i painted this stripe on his chest it it really was starting to come together now i'm painting his base plate that metallic blue color this is just the first coat Everything needed two to three coats. So here is the finish Storm Strike. And I think it looks amazing. Minus the fact that it does not glow in the dark. I think it looks amazing. So the only thing left to do is put in his weapons. It's fully working really good second one is going on and it's it's pretty good i i didn't want to go wild with swinging them because some of the pieces were not completely dry but this is the final product compared to what we started with and it just it came out so nice i'm so happy with the way it came out Okay, so guys, I didn't give Prideheart a second weapon or change his primary weapon because since he won the tournament, I figured he was deadly enough. Instead, I wanted to make him look like he was in an actual suit of armor. And I wanted to make his horns, pauldrons, and belt look like real gold. And I think I really achieved that with this awesome paint I found. I'll show you guys what he looks like in the sun later because he is so shiny that you would think he was actually made of metal. Also, we are not fighting him in this video, but we will in a future video, so don't worry. He's just still not fully dry, so I didn't want to damage him, especially with the way the boys fight. I am Chuck Slee, direct what descendant of Bruce Lee. I won every tournament I ever entered. I was the greatest warrior for my clan. One day, I was summoned to the greatest tournament ever to have taken place. Once I got there, I discovered it was a trap. The evil wizard Thunderwind had lured me there so he could summon a mythical ancient warrior named Stormstrike. He needed my nunchucks. Ever since that day, my wounds have not healed. I believe the blade used to cut the nunchucks out of my hand was cursed. There is only one cure for this type of curse. I will find it. I will be back. The next time you see me, I will be the best again. I died that night in the coldest blizzard on the highest mountain top. My spirit rose up from my body and became one with my ancestors. But something was not right. My ancestors were not happy. I could sense an overwhelming desire for revenge. I was sent back for blood. Okay, is everyone ready? Yeah, OMG. <laughs> I'm getting ready, okay. Okay, guys. Huh? Wait, what does huh? he look like? What does huh? he look like? Guys, oh. is that can awesome I, or what? Dad, can I see? I want to see. Wait, Dad, why didn't you add the eyes? No, oh, I didn't. I thought it'd be cooler without eyes. Do you guys like it? No. That's cool. It has no eyes. How do you do that? Punching. Isn't that cool? Wait, can I do that punch? Of punch? Okay, so you boys are too young to know who this is, but this is Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee from Enter the Dragon, okay? And okay, wait, hold on a second. Okay, so just to show you guys how authentic this thing is, like watch. When he punches, his fist goes out. 
And then when you bring him back, his fist drops back in. So it's not like his fist stays out. It's, it's fully working. Wait. One day I was looking at Mizuchi's teeth and it reminded me of Carnage's teeth. So immediately I wanted to use Mizuchi's head, but I thought Chuck Lee's body was more of a match for Carnage. So the first step was to swap heads and weapons. The next step was to start shaping the head so that it looked more like Carnage's head, which is more of an oval shape. I'm just using a Dremel to grind off the sides of the helmet. To get the right shape for his head, I'm using wood filler. Here I'm just drawing in some temporary eyes just to see how it looks. And I thought that the jaw needed to be a bit longer, so I'm just going to add some filler. I'm still trying to save the teeth at this point, which is why I used Mizuchi's head in the first place. But I'm starting to realize that I need to completely reshape the head and cover the teeth. And after drawing in some eyes again, I'm okay with it. So now I'm going to paint the head red, really just to see how it's looking because the shape of the head and the painting of the eyes and teeth are going to make or break this build. These eyes and teeth are just temporary again. And after seeing everything, I decided to add a little bit to the top of the head to get the shape I was looking for. And now we can move on to the next step. Now I'm gonna start on Carnage's weapon. So I'm busting out my 3D pen and we're gonna start making that huge blade that Carnage has for a hand. So I'm not adding to the length of the original weapon because I wanna keep the basic mechanics of the weapon as fair as possible. Although at this point, the weapon can no longer swivel and will always be in the ideal striking position. I really like how the blade was coming out because the texture actually looked like real muscle tissue, kind of like how the real Carnage does. And here I'm just doing a quick test with the weapon and it's total Carnage. Now I'm just grinding the weapon into the shape I want while also removing any parts of his hand. I can then finish the back half of the weapon which is basically the shape of a Sith. Here we are with the finished product and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It's huge and it looks ridiculous. I'm just grinding all the edges to make it look more like a blade and I think it's pretty accurate. This is the red that we will be using for Carnage and we are ready to start painting. I'm going to give him a good 3-4 to four coats of paint. While I'm doing this, if you like watching our videos, then please go and hit that subscribe button because we got a lot of awesome videos coming up. Just after one coat, I think this guy looks really cool, but I'm adding a few more coats because I want him to be perfect when I reveal him to Eddie and Clark later on. While I was waiting for the red paint to dry, I'm going to do something I haven't been doing, but I really want to start doing for all my customizations. I'm going to give Carnage his very own custom controller. So I started by spray painting it red and then I'm just going to add some of those black veins to it. And I think it came out awesome. Now that Carnage's paint is all dry, I'm going to make his back tentacles. We didn't watch the movie, but we did see the trailer, so we know how deadly these things are. Just based off of the scene with the prison guard. You know what I'm talking about. After they cooled off, I just gave them a quick grinding. Then I figured the best spots to attach them to Carnage. So the top tentacles had to go on his upper back and the lower tentacles had to go on his upper leg just so that he could still be split and not be affected by the tentacle placement. And here you can see I'm testing it out and he still works perfectly. And I think it just looks awesome guys, what do you think? And once all four are attached, I give them a couple of coats of red and I think it looks amazing. Now it's time to start painting the face and honestly, I'm really nervous because it's going to be pretty challenging, but let's just jump right into it.
Here is the halfway point and it took me a long time to get here, but I can't stop now because check out the finished product guys. If you're wondering how he got so shiny, I just sprayed a couple coats of clear coat onto him and I think he looks pretty amazing. Here I am testing him out and you can see he split strikes like he's supposed to. Everyone saw Carnage, mm -hmm. but nobody yeah. saw this. Carnage. Yeah, and everyone everyone saw it, Clarky. Everyone saw the video. You guys didn't. No one can beat Carnage, right? Mm -hmm. oh! <laughs> oh, Carnage. Carnage. Wait, I'm showing everyone. Carnage got handed off quick. Wait, can I show the people oh, watching at cool. home? Oh, that's not an egghead. I'm so... Eddie, both their heads are shaped the same. I'm surprised. Dude, Carnage got handed off that quickly. Okay, so guys, you didn't get to see this, but complete custom controller for Venom. So there's Venom. I pretty much made him this exact same way. It's just a different paint scheme. So this guy was a lot easier to paint, as you can see. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to Eddie's World. In today's video, we will attempt to make a Christmas themed super warrior by combining Badfoot's good looks with Mr. Split's knockout punch. And who is this character you ask? Maybe you read the book, maybe you saw the movie, maybe you even know one in real life. If you guessed the Grinch, then you guessed right. Okay. So my plan for this build is basically to swap Badfoot's right arm with Mr. Split's punching arm. And I realized that in order to achieve the level of deadliness that I was looking for, I needed to angle the punching arm so that it would strike ahead of the kick to give him a one-two combination that no other warrior has. To create that angle, I just used my 3D pen to fabricate a little wedge. And after some testing, I'm ready to add a few Christmas decorations. The first thing that I wanted to do was to give the Grinch a sack to make it look like he just took a bunch of presents off some innocent kids. The easiest way for me to do this was to borrow one of the boys Lego sacks because Lego is just about the same scale as a Kato. And after a few modifications, it was ready to be attached to his left hand. But before we do that, I'm gonna put a Santa hat on his head which I also borrowed from the Lego bin. In order to get the hat to fit, I needed to grind down some of his head. Doesn't that look kind of like some Jack Link's beef jerky coming off there? I gotta stop and eat lunch after this. Eventually, I was able to get the hat to fit perfectly. Now, I'm drilling and cutting out the back of his hand so I can slip the sack in and glue it. He's all ready to paint, so sit back and enjoy. Okay, are you boys ready? Daddy, oh! <laughs> Daddy give me top. Open your eyes. Weirdo! Weirdo! <laughs> That's so cool. You guys know who that is? Grinch. But do you notice anything different about this Grinch? It doesn't even walk. It doesn't even go away. It does. It doesn't even work. Okay, so I'm starting with a broken Chuck's Lee, as you can see here. His nunchucks had broken during combat, which is perfect for us as we will be removing his weapon anyways. And the first thing we need to do is reshape his head using a little bundle. I think I went a little crazy with the filler, but that's okay because we'll just sandpaper that puppy down until we get the shape we're looking for. It's really important to get his head right because... His head looks so doofy. Like, what? Mm, it's like Mega Mind. <laughs> he looks like a noodle head. Yeah. 
So I'm spending a little extra time on this guy to make sure his head is perfect. I like to throw on a quick coat of paint to see what it looks like and then I can make any necessary changes before moving on. I also like to get the eyes on to make sure everything is going to work out. I really like what I'm seeing at this point so we are ready to proceed. For this next part, I'm going to bust out my 3D pen which has really been coming in handy for these customizations and this is the look I'm going for so let's see what we can do. We got a little bit more experience this time around and I know now that I need to secure the spider legs better so I'm actually going to drill holes for them to sit in. I'm going to glue in three of his legs but his last leg I'm planning on being his weapon which will make this guy really unique because he'll be the only warrior that isn't holding his weapon. I think it's going to be really awesome if it all works out but I'm going to work on that later because I'm really getting anxious about this paint job and I want to bust out the brushes. So the first thing I like to paint are the internal parts and any pieces that need to touch other painted parts. That way they can dry and I don't have to worry about them sticking together. This paint scheme was so overwhelming and honestly I had my doubts but at a certain point I realized that I wasn't going to be able to get every single detail painted on but instead I needed to figure out what was essential for the character. As hard as these customizations have been, I really enjoy doing them because they have been coming out so nice and I do want to make one last Spider-Man themed customization and I'm going to let you guys decide who it is. So let me know down below in the comment section who you guys want. So what do you think of it so far? You think it looks like Iron Spider-Man? If you guys like what you're seeing then please split strike that subscribe button and ball up your fist and smash that like button. In the middle of painting I noticed Eddie had finished the project he was working on so I decided to check it out and he never ceases to amaze me. I think that just gave me the motivation I needed to get this paint job done. If you're wondering why I'm painting his pants white, it's to brighten the metallic blue which otherwise would have a hard time covering that metallic stoplight red. And this tool I'm using here is just the head of a pin that I cut off and stuck into the eraser side of a pencil. Spider-Man just doesn't look right with white pants so let's go ahead and get the blue on. I'm glad I took the time to lay down that coat of white because even after one pass of metallic blue it looks really good. I've been giving everything three coats and then I seal it with a clear coat because I know my boys are not going to take it easy on this guy so he has to be durable and be able to take a beating as well as he can dish it out. I'm just using a sharpie to finish up the web design on his mask and if you do this you need to be careful not to touch the ink because it will rub off until you seal it. This is the spray on clear coat I use and I just put a little on at a time and I let it dry really good before reapplying. And the only thing left to do is make his weapon so for this last spider leg I'm going to use some wire to give it some durability. Then I'm just going to grind it smooth and glue it in at just the right angle. The length is just a little longer than an actual Akato weapon and it's because he needs to go up against Denim and Carnage and the rest of the OP custom warriors. Oh 
Oh man, I'm so close to finishing. I just need a few coats of gold paint. And check this out guys, do you like it? Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to finish his custom controller or to test him out. We're starting with buzz cut for this customization because he has the body type that we need. And we also had an extra one of him, which is the real reason we chose him. Once we remove his weapon, we can start shaping his head with some bundle, the same as with Spidey and Carnage. That piece of cardboard is just to maintain the gap between his chin and his body. Once I pull it off, you can see it did its job. And now we sand until we're happy with the shape. After I got his head perfect, I needed to get his hand into a more Spider-Man-like position. So I'm going to cut it off and glue it back palm up. Then I'm going to use my Dremel to grind off his two fingers to make that iconic Spider-Man web slinging gesture. To make his two extended fingers, I'm just using the tips of a fork because if at all possible, I like to use things I have lying around the house rather than fabricating them. The next part was kind of dangerous so I didn't show exactly what I did but I basically heated up a pin and embedded it into his wrist. To finish his weapon, I needed to fire up my 3D pen and then I'm going to start making some webbing. Once they cooled off, I was able to glue the six sides together and I think it came out pretty nice. So I'm gonna glue it to the pin and use the Dremel to grind it all smooth. So far, everything is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna test him out just one time to make sure he works and yes. We are ready to paint. Miles Morales will give us our eighth custom warrior, which is perfect for us to have our first all custom warrior tournament, which should be awesome. So stick around to the end of the video because we have some announcements about our future videos and also about our giveaways. And if you guys are enjoying the video, then please consider subscribing and hitting that like button.
And here is the finished product. What do you guys think? You think he'll be able to hold his own against Iron Spider-Man and Carnage? Well, we are going to find out soon enough, guys. So you may or may not know, but we are preparing for our very first all-custom Akedo Warrior Tournament. And from some of the testing that we've been doing, I realized that Stormstrike and Prideheart probably wouldn't stand a chance against Carnage, Iron Spidey, or the Grinch. So I wanted to give them a fighting chance, but I may have went a little overboard with the buffing. So make sure you guys watch till the very end of the video and let me know if you think they're too OP. But before we get into all that, I wanted to give Miles Morales, Stormstrike, Prideheart, and Bruce Lee their own custom controllers. So here we go. And as usual, I'm going to take apart the controllers and spray paint them to give them their base color. After that, I can paint on whatever designs I want. This silver controller is for Pride Heart, and I found this design that Google said was the Medieval Knight's coat of arms, so I decided to go with that. I ended up changing the design halfway through, and I think it came out pretty nice. The silver spray paint was really shiny and metallic, and there's no mistaking whose controller this belongs to. You guys probably guessed that the yellow controller was for Bruce Lee, and it is inspired by his yellow jumpsuit he wore in the movie Game of Death. You gotta be pretty old or a big fan to remember that one, but it's the movie where Bruce Lee fights Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The black controller is for none other than Miles Morales and you know I had to do the spiderweb design on it and it came out really nice and it looks even nicer with Miles on it. I've been reading the comments and it seems like you guys want more Spider-Man characters so I will come back to do all those figures like Doc Ock, Green Goblin and Anti-Venom but in the coming videos I'm going to be doing some different themes that I think you guys will like just as much. Last is the white controller for Stormstrike and I painted a huge metallic blue lightning strike down it and with that completed all of our custom warriors now have their own custom controllers and we are ready to move on to buffing Prideheart and Stormstrike. My idea to make Stormstrike more effective was simple but it turned out to be harder to accomplish than I thought. I wanted to freeze his striking weapon in the perfect position, eliminating the useless striking he did with his mace always flopping around in the wrong spot. To achieve this, I used some super glue because I wanted it to look like his chain was actually frozen in ice. And I think the super glue created that look pretty well, but it didn't harden like I thought it would, and I'm not sure if it will hold up against the boy's aggressive biting style. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. His non-striking mace I froze in a forward position and it almost serves as a shield. I didn't test him out at all because I wanted to wait and let the glue dry more but just from looking at him he looks like he's pretty hard to split strike. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think. For Prideheart, I wanted to give him a more intimidating weapon and I also wanted to give him a big shield because when you think of a knight, don't you picture him with a massive shield? I was really lucky because while I was trying to figure out how I was going to make the shield, I just so happened to find that Lego leaf in our Akedo box 
and it was a perfect starting point for his shield. It would also save me a lot of time rather than trying to fabricate it from scratch. I just modified it by filling in some of the holes and cutting off the parts I didn't need. And after a bunch of grinding and sanding, I attached it together with a broken weapon handle that I found lying around. Don't throw away any of your broken Akedo guys, they come in handy. And finally, I painted the coat of arms on it. And I think this guy has a real shot at winning the tournament because between his sword and shield, there is not that much of an opening to split strike this guy. Let me know what you guys think of him. <laughs> Dude, that was masterfully played, son. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us for our first all custom Akedo Warrior Tournament. Before we jump into the action, let me just explain a few things. First off, we use the random generator to come up with this bracket. And second, every fight including the championship match will be best of three. With that out of the way, let's jump right into the first match, Carnage versus Miles Morales. Ready, fight, split strike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh. Okay, one zero. Carnage is winning. Ready, fight, split strike. We actually want Carnage to win. Yeah. Oh, that was easy. Yeah, you did.
Okay, so Carnage moves on to fight the winner of Bruce Lee and Stormstrike, which we are gonna do right now. Okay, we got OP Stormstrike versus Bruce Lee. The winner of this battle will go on to fight Carnage. In the next round, ready, fight, split strike. Oh! It's 1-0, Bruce Lee needs one more and he's moving on. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh, why did I choose this? Oh, oh, you tied it up. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness, I was not expecting that. I thought Storm Strike was so OP. Me too. Oh my goodness. We got Venom versus Iron Spidey. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh! Dude! Oh, I thought Iron Spidey was invincible. One more and Venom moves on. He's leading 1-0. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh my god, oh my god. Eddie, you <laughs> You guys are playing this like a game of chess, man. Okay, it's tied up. 1-1. One, one. Tiebreaker is about to go down. The winner of this match goes on to the next round. Ready? Fight. Split strike. I did not see that coming at all. Oh my gosh. I thought Iron Spidey was going to be in the finals for sure. We got Carnage versus Bruce Lee and Venom versus the winner of the Grinch versus Pride Heart. Clarky is on OP Pride Heart. We got Eddie on the Grinch who stole a Kato. Ready, fight, split, strike. Oh, nice. 1 0, OP Pride Heart. Ready, fight, split, strike. Just, just take them out. Oh! Oh! Okay, it's 1-1. One, one. Ready, fight, split, strike. Going out in the first round, Miles Morales, OP Storm Strike, Iron Spidey, and the Grinch. Daddy. And moving on is Carnage versus Bruce Lee, and Venom versus OP Pride Heart. First to two moves on to the championship, our first custom championship. Ready, fight, split strike. Move your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Bruce Lee is holding his own, man. Oh! Okay, it's 1 0, Bruce Lee. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh! Hey. <laughs> 
Okay, it's one to one. The winner of this goes on to the championship. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh my God. Oh no, I lost the yeah. tentacle wig. Oh. No, there's the same. Oh, it actually snapped. Ready, fight, split oh, strike. No. Daddy! What? <laughs> Your fighting technique, dude. Oh! Oh my gosh, this is intense, man. Our next fight is Venom versus OP Pride Heart. First the two moves on to fight Carnage for our very first championship. Ready? Fight. Split strike. Oh! Okay, it's 1-0. One 1-0. Zero. One zero. Venom is winning. Ready? Fight. Split strike. Championship fight! It's Venom versus Carnage for our first championship ever! Oh my gosh, guys. Oh my gosh, that was epic. I'm getting flashbacks of when we did the Carnage versus Venom video. Mm -hmm. Carnage totally owned Venom, man. <laughs> this is the championship fight. First to two is our first ever all custom Yay! tournament champion. Ready? Fight. Split strike. I can tell Sparky does not want to lose this one again. He lost the I first to, match. I need to mm, keep all of the tags. No, you don't. No, you do, don't. Do, no, do. you just need a split strike up. Mm. Oh! Hey, it's only 1 0. This is like the opposite of what happened during our first battle. Yeah. Okay, it's 1-0. Venom is winning. Totally the opposite of what happened in the first one. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh! Venom totally redeemed himself. Venom is the winner of our first ever all custom tournament. Oh my gosh, that was so awesome. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you haven't already, please split strike that like and subscribe button and we will see you in the next video.